is to show you the basic steps of segmentation. So we're going to start with the hip demo file. So you can get to that by basically just opening. It's going to be in your default drive wherever you installed it, something called metadata, and then demo files. And then these are the demo files that they routinely have. So we just picked hip out of the middle one. Uh, these steps would be pretty similar for just bones, but the hip has a few additional features, which I thought were kind of interesting to show. And they work into talk about with scripting. So we'll just do it kind of manually first, and then we'll show you some automated ways to do this. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the segment tab, and we're going to make a new mask. And the default value for bones starts at 226 and just kind of goes to the maximum. If you have metal somewhere in your hip, um, for these, it would likely start around 1600 and then go to the max. And so if you want to separate bone and metal, that's kind of a different thing. And you would kind of do a different uh, threshold to get metal and then to get bone. And bone, you just go up to where the metal starts so that they don't overlap. All right, so we'll start there. And we don't need to rename this uh, right now because we'll actually delete that later. The next thing we're going to do is split all of these bones into separate parts. And I can tell that this is a, a probably a pediatric pelvis or a pelvis with a, uh, a fracture, tripod fracture, because you have these like three separated spots. And that's kind of where your growth plates are in the pelvis. So um, it will try and do a, a split mask and separate those pieces as well. So that's kind of interesting. So the bottom one looks like it's all fused together, so it could be a fracture. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is um, do a split mask. And we used to have to do this on 2D images, but actually the I think the newest version lets you do them on the 3Ds, which is really nice. So. Split mask is essentially painting onto the surface and letting us indicate where are the separate pieces. So if we count how many pieces we have, we have one femur, two is the ischium, three is the ilium, four is the sacrum, five is the other ilium, six is the other ischium, seven is this other femur. So put seven parts in there, two, three, four, six, seven, and we'll move. We'll click at the top one and we'll move left to right across. So we'll just paint this on the 3D. And what we're kind of looking to do is give the computer an idea of here's where the one starts and the other one stops. So if there's any pieces that get like, you know, like they're almost touching, and you kind of want to give the computer a heads up of like, well, here's where it stops, or here's where it stops, and here's where the other one starts. But these aren't, aren't really well connected anyway, so I'm not super worried about that. Is the ilium, sorry. Put the sacrum and that last lumbar vertebrae all together. <laughs> and you can obviously take as much time as you want with this, but I'm just showing you uh, very quickly. And you have to take more time if the pieces are more connected. Um, so if you hit spacebar while it's in the full screen, you'll see if there's any of these areas that are really um, touching each other in the mask, like, I don't know, maybe like right here with that, it's pretty close, but they're only touching by a few pixels, so it's, I don't think it's going to be much of an issue. And then here's the SI joint up here, and those are like not touching at all, so. Um, we're just going to hit OK, and then you can watch it on that 3D down there, how well it works. This is one of the, the nicest functions, I think, in, in Mimics to be able to separate all these things very quickly. And the reason we're doing that is because we eventually want to get these bones filled in solid, and the operations to do that are typically this smart fill. And if you have very thin spaces between bones, and, and it's all one object, you go to I go to fill that and it fills in the little gaps between all the bones, which is not, there's no bone there, so we don't want that. 
Um, next, we'll start labeling things. So um, it's a little counterintuitive. The, the right femur is actually on the left side of our screen uh, because we are looking at uh, we're we're looking at the patient the front of the patient and it's the patient's uh, right legs. So we've got right femur in here, and you can just click down here. Right. This, yeah. Eventually, we'll get um, raised too, but it's helpful for us to just see what it is at this time. So, all right, the next step we're going to do is fill in these bones. We'll use our smart fill and we'll just keep going in order how we did before. And what we'll do with this is this is essentially um, kind of like patching the holes in a water balloon. And if you patch up all the holes in a water balloon, you kind of um, are able to keep all the water on the inside. And so we'll kind of see what that looks like. We'll start with a low value and we'll see like, the axials. That essentially the marked pixels are, are uh, dilating out and then eroding. And wherever they close a really small hole, they tend to stick. And otherwise, they just kind of stay there. So we can see that there's some really tiny holes maybe over in this area. Um, we could go in manually and mark those. The other thing that we can think about is where's there a big hole in this bone? And I'm going to tell you it's on the axials. When we think about the diathesis of this long bone, that's the biggest hole. So if we go over here and we just kind of manually mark that giant hole that would not fill until like we did four or five pixels or maybe more on this left sided tool. We can see how well that works. So we basically went to the last slice as like that's the biggest hole. And then we can scroll up and see, well, in the trochanter area, there's probably a small hole that also needs to get patched. So we dial down our brush size and kind of mark where we think that is. Uh, you can also use page up and page down on your keyboard, and that helps you skip by about 10 slices. So that's a quick quicker way to run through those. After you think it's good, you click OK, and then that gives you kind of a filled bone for the same version. Sorry, I'm just going to delete the old one as I show. All right, so we basically repeat that step with all of these other ones. And, you know, with this one, we have this really small gap here, so we want to be careful about filling that in, but we can use this, you know, my cold tool and manually do that. And we would just kind of quick check, look through these and see if you can spot any holes in the axial images. And you can just kind of free mark and see these images are there's kind of thick slices here. So you just use the arrow key as well. And you can also hit control, right click, and drag up and down. That'll help you get a little bit uh, zoomed in image and help you spot the holes a little bit better. So let's see if we can't spot where those holes are. Kind of like notorious spots of bones where the holes are always located, just kind of like thin areas of the vertical bone. So if you have a little bit of experience doing a particular anatomy, you get used to figuring out where those are, and this process goes a little bit faster. And if those that gap in the bone wasn't uh, so close, if we didn't want to keep that open, also this would go very, very quickly. So you want to be careful about how big the brush is. You don't want to go in really large because when it makes uh, additional bone on the outside that's not real, um, that's much harder to clean up. Here's the holes. Looks like in right here. Hmm. 
sometimes it's just one tiny hole. And once you fill it, the whole bone just kind of goes in just like that. And you can see that, you know, if there is a hole somewhere, you can tell by where the, where the bone is most unfilled. It helps you spot where the hole is coming from. And you want to use the biggest brush that you can um, while avoiding that issue of marking on the outside of them. Uh, I work on the axials because typically axials are the thinnest slices that are reconstructed. So you're less likely to miss an issue there. Um, if you're doing manual segmentation, you would generally want to work in the the anatomic plane that has the most slices through that object. Um, and you get kind of like the uh, best resolution of it as you are marking and going through it. All right. Okay. Yeah, and if we missed, say we missed a hole and we just, you know, got it later, um, you can do that in the CAD portion as well. So, you know, take as much time as you want on this, but filling filling some holes in objects later is not, not the end of the world. Great. Right. So we're onto the ilium now. This one doesn't really have, so we'll go back to that multi-screen view. This one is just one big piece, right? And this is this would be easier. So this doesn't really have um, any small gaps to worry about. So we can actually crank this up a little bit more. We can fill holes that are more like four. <clears throat> and we'll look at this 3D and that will actually tell you like, hey, is it filling up like a little bit too much? Usually, want to start with the lower value, so we can see that that green on the outside is. If we have little concave areas, it's gonna it's gonna fill those up, and that's we don't want that, so it's not real. So, and through this axis, you can see it's it's filled. So, uh, the sacrum is probably one of the hardest bones to do this process with because you're getting areas that are um, act, you, you have a bunch of areas that are actually where the nerves travel through the bone and you have a bunch of this light colored bone that's not segmented super well. So I would you know, do the best you can with a smart fill, but um, it's going to be challenging just because it's going to fill in a bunch of areas that are not real bone, unfortunately. So I'll probably cancel that and say yes. And that one would probably be more of a manual uh, marking for each, for all the spots. And you can try and go in um, axials with a decently large brush and try to get those spots. For the vertebral bodies, the cell five, um, the holes are usually in this posterior part right in the middle, in the middle of the vertebral body. The page up, page down works on the slice where your mouse is over. So if I, if you just moved it over here, you would move up and down 10 on those slices. And with these thick slices, the processing is actually a bit faster than it would be on a very, uh, file of like a thousand slices, this process is a little bit slower. So here's the part where it's a real hole, it's a spinal canal in the back. Kind of a weird area that you're 
nerves travel through. All right, and the vertebral body is up here, so you can. So that's the top of the slice. So that's all the way up, and I'll probably use a small, a slightly smaller brush, and get into these spots. So you can see that this circle has like two circles on it. One is a solid circle, one is a dotted circle. And the solid circle will like always fill in, but the dotted circle will be like, if it hits an edge, then it will fill in. So it's not all the time, but that's pretty good for these. And You can work on fine tuning it later. Right, so that's the sacrum. And you would do that kind of all the way around, fill in all the bones. I'll just do it with these four currently. But after your bones are filled in, you'd select those. And then you go to this little box here, which calculates the parts, or you can right click and do calculate part and you can just use the optimal settings what that'll do is it'll create what we call parts or objects and those are defined by triangles on the surface and they appear a little bit smoother versus if i turn those off and show you the masks those are made of voxels or three-dimensional pixels kind of like the marked pixel through a slice so as I, um, as you see that one and then these, you'll see there's a slight difference to them. Um, we also do smoothing operations after these as well. So if you did 3D tools and a smooth function, um, it goes from zero to one. And you can do a small, slight amount. All right. So that's slightly smoothed. So that might be something that's common. And then you can look in the parts after and see like, oh, uh, there's a hole right there. So easy to spot. You can click it in the 3D and then you can go back and you might be able to see it on the images and fix it later. So pretty minor, but all right, that's your intro to segmentation and kind of the order of operations that you would do to create some filled bones. Um, I'm going to this.